So we're back again. And we're back in the sauna after a few days off because I can't go too quickly. I said I was going to do one every two days every day. I'm going to run out of drum cams real quick. So I'm just trying to slow the pace down just a little bit. And I was actually going to watch this one myself a few days ago. And then I thought, nah, this is this is definitely going to get asked for. I'm not going to give it away to myself. Uh, so this is Meshuga Bleed, the drum cam of Thomas Hake. And of course, everyone knows Meshuga. I know Meshuga. I've heard Bleed. But I've never actually watched this specific drum cam of him before. I didn't even know it existed, to be honest. Oh, blueberries. See, we cater to everyone here, you know. Vegans and stuff, you know, blueberries, good. Um, so, let's do Meshuga Bleed. Um, I'll try and talk some of the way through it about some stuff, like symbols and her patterns and, and so on. And uh, just try and have a, a good time. So let's do it. Bleed, 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 bleed. bleed. Are you fucking ready? Oh, and that is why this song is famous. That's why this guy is famous. That Herta. Those two sixteenths and two eighths at that tempo. What are ghost notes? No, it's weird because I actually tricks you into thinking that the time signature is all over the place, but it's actually straight 4-4. Four four. Snares on beat 3, that's all you have to listen for. Or if you want to follow the symbols as well. But there's not to say that in some parts of the song it doesn't throw you. There's a few people that did covers of this as well on YouTube, and the most notable ones, obviously, is uh, Troy Wright. He does an incredible cover of it, and he uploaded it like nine years ago or something. He, um, he uploaded that. Uh, and G Anzoni of Dragon Force also does an incredible cover of it as well. Back into the skank beat with the kind of like triplet drag. The bass drums just don't stop in this song. It's not only is it a test of timing, and I don't mean timing as in playing the time signature, it's a test of your timing to make sure your hertas are exactly in time with the guitar riff. Maybe his ghost notes are to help him with his cymbal hits. Because you don't really hear any ghosts. And maybe it's just to the timing to help his right hand to get the pattern right. It's like a... It's still 4-4, four four, but it's like a 3-16 cymbal pattern. Is it? It's so difficult to tell because your mind is just fixated on the dil -a -dil -a -dil -a -dil -a -dil. and the hurt has changed again. They change position once again. Tell you what, the guy who did the lighting for this needs big cojone medals. Serious lighting games going on. I will do Clockworks at some point. I haven't watched that one either. I don't even think I've heard Clockworks, to be honest. Um, but I thought we'd do this one first. It's so... It's, it's 
Being able to follow the guitar riff with that accuracy is Jesus spec abilities there. I wonder if they programmed the atomic clock in Switzerland they just took a sample of Thomas's blood and said yeah that'll never lose time now into the clock. Even through this guitar solo, this guitar break, the hurtas are changing essentially in every bar and he's keeping time with the guitar riff. Yes, you take a break Thomas, please, before you kill me. <laughs> I love how he's got two ride symbols for crashes as well. You know, this is my 22 inch ride, it's also my crash. This is my 45 inch gong, but I use it as a crash. It's crash everything. Crash Bandicoot. Pedal boards, are they trick pedals? I think they are. Are they trick pedals? I think they are. Um, his footboards are quite high. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the way he plays, he plays quite, he plays heel down, but when he goes for his double, his heel comes up quite high. Uh, I'm not sure if the pedal board is there to help him with those tricky doubles for the... See, his heel comes quite, quite high up. I know a lot of guys, when they're playing doubles, they play you know, their heel goes down. And when he plays it, his heel's going up, so he must be playing more like a... Like a instead of like a heel-toe, he must be playing like a toe-heel. Look at these lights. Honestly, that lighting guy is unbelievable. Oh, we're back again. With a different hair apart again. This guy. It's a shame that these guys tend to get, you know, like... I don't mean, like, mainstream, but... They, they don't really get the appreciation that they should deserve from, like modern metal drummer things and, and, and things like that, they just don't seem to receive them. And it's really quite infuriating, actually. <laughs> Look at his face, he's not worried, he's having a good time. What is time? Completed it, mate. I've completed time. That's what he's thinking right now. Make the sound. His feet must be on absolute fire by now. Yes, smash the china. Smash the china for me. Those bass drags, man. It, it's. It's. <laughs> There's a lesson from this video. There's a lesson we can all take from Bleed, and there's a lesson we can all take from Thomas Hacker. And that lesson, I think, is that we should all be inspired by this to stop playing. Because that is ridiculous. I'm only joking, don't stop playing. But. That, uh, I've, those hurt patterns are so, so difficult. You're not going to learn this in one month. You're not going to learn this in two months. Maybe not even three, you know. I know uh, G. Anzalone from Dragon Force, who was saying he was working on this song for about five months, six months properly to really get everything nailed and to make sure all the different hurt patterns were lining up with the riff. 
and the way it progresses. Um, I don't think we need to have a massive discussion on this one. It kind of speaks for itself. Everyone knows Meshuga Bleed. But it was interesting to see it from the actual perspective of what he's actually playing. Because when you listen to songs like this in the on the album, a lot of the drum work is actually buried. You know, not the bass drums and the snares, but a lot of the cymbal work is actually buried in the mix. And it just kind of sounds like shh. But it's interesting to see, you know, what he's playing. And that you, could, you can pick out like the 316 patterns by watching by watching their hands and the way they're doing it. So Thomas Hackey, you are an animal. Or as they say in France, le animal. <laughs> so I'm going to just go and not play drums today. I'm just going to go to my bed and think about what I've just witnessed. Uh, next time, the next one, I think we're going to do... Let's do Dragon Force. Let's let's support the cause. Let's do Dragon Force. Let's find a Dragon Force drum cam uh, for the next one, and I will see you there. Leave a comment with whatever you want. Be a troll. Don't be a troll, but preferably a drum cam recommendation for after the next one, and then we can uh, we'll take it from there. So, see you around.